Good morning. Saturday morning. So today we were supposed to go on the sailboat, but um, I talked to Captain Don, Captain Peacock. I don't know what he likes to be referred to better, but because uh, of the weather today, I will show you. It is raining and it is hot. It is humid. I hope it cools down. But, um, and so the weather that was coming in, he said it wasn't a good weekend. Uh, so next Saturday, we're going to go and he's actually going to be on the boat. He had to go back to Nantucket. He has a boat there. And, um, but he'll be here next week. So we will all be on the sailboat next week. But today, Keith and I are doing an adventure. John's in with Gail. So Keith and I are going to the St. Augustine uh, Aquarium and we're doing the snorkeling. So you get to snorkel. It's an 80 degree pool. So happy about that. So I got my bathing suit on and, um, and yeah, and so you just wear your bathing suit, bring a towel. They have the snorkel. They have a wetsuit if you need it. I don't know why I need it. Um, Keith and I were saying because it's 80 degrees. So, uh, but we'll see when we get there. And we get to feed fish and stingrays. And I guess they have all kinds of species there. So it seems like a pretty small aquarium, but I'm still excited. I don't care. I'm still excited to go. Uh, so, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. I just have been doing work this morning. Work, 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 work. It's been quite the uh, weekend and I got notice that, um, maybe I shouldn't jinx it, but that I've moved through the first phase of the, of the ship, um, applications. So I am excited. I keep watching stuff now on YouTube about working on cruises and I actually think that this, if you don't know, I have been applying. I don't think I told anybody. I told my mom, but I have been applying to cruise ships for over two years. And so it's just kind of random now that they reached out to me <laughs> and like, yeah, me too. And like I said, um, you know, I already said next year van life's going to look different. I did. I said, I didn't know how, but maybe this is how it's going to look different. It's not going to be in a van. It's going to be on a ship. So, fingers crossed. Send me good vibes. I really, really, really want to try this job at least. Uh, okay. Well, let's go. I'm gonna. I'm getting my stuff all packed together. And uh, oops, Chuck and Charlie are. Oh, they're taking a nap back there. <laughs> they're taking a nap together. They wanted to sleep in on a Saturday, so I let them sleep in. All those those hands. Uh, it's hard to sometimes. So, okay, uh, I'm going to get Keith and we're going to head on out to St. Augustine. Come, let's go snorkeling and feeding fishes in 80 degree weather pools. Okay, let's go. I guess they don't have to scooch over. They're already scooched. Come on, you guys get in the back. We're going now. Go to the bathroom first. Okay. Okay. Keith, say hi, Keith. Hi Keith, how are you? <laughs> We're driving to St. Augustine and I was in a rush, I was on the phone uh, and um, yeah, I forgot my thing for my phone to hold it, I forgot my GoPro, but good thing Keith brought his GoPro because we want to get stuff underneath the water, so okay, we're headed to go snorkeling, right Keith? And feed the stingrays and the fish. The fishy fishies. Yep see how it goes. So we're here and uh, we have to fill out a waiver. Well, it looks like we have to watch something and uh, yeah this is the St. Augustine Aquarium and it's all outdoors so and you can't just take a tour by yourself I guess. find where the where the pool is oh it's like a big it's a big um let's see, let's see if it's even that big oh there we go oh look at how pretty there's a little mermaid those are pretty 
ready. Hi guys. Wow. Oh, look at it. Hi. Whoa. Whoa. Let's see. I wish I could claim to the one who named him, but I cannot. He was here before I was, so he's been here all six years. The aquarium's been open, so he um, is absolutely a long-lived, long-lived guy. He's an old, old man. Do you guys know if Pudge is dangerous to us? Yes. Yes. Yes, he is. Do you guys know how he's dangerous? Is he a poison? He is poisonous, which means if you eat him, he can hurt you. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think, oh, he's poisonous like the spikes. Yeah. The spikes are completely harmless. Um, Thank goodness for us, the spikes are completely harmless because Pudge here is really spoiled. He refuses to eat unless we hand feed him. Uh, and he doesn't see very well, so he runs into our hands all the time. Oh my uh, so yeah, if the spikes were dangerous, then I would have been in trouble a long time ago. Uh, but what I'm looking for is them as parents. Do you guys know anything interesting about seahorses as parents? No. So the dads give birth, not the moms. What? Yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. They're one of just three species of animals in the world where that's the case. So the males have a pouch. So I would point it out if we had any males in here, but we don't. All four of ours are females right now. But the males have a little belly button looking incision in their belly. Uh, if they decide they want to be a dad, they go up to a female, they open up that pouch uh, to show that they're receptive to eggs. The female, if she decides she's going to be a good dad, she'll push her eggs into his pouch. He fertilizes them, incubates them, and they hatch within just a three week period. So not a nine month pregnancy, just three weeks. Well, of course, it's always easy when um, they're males. Oh, just, yeah. uh, but wait till you hear how many he has to carry. How many? Uh, anywhere from 100 to 1,000, depending on the species. These guys in here, two to 400. That being said, the dads are terrible dads. Once they give birth, they'll eat as many of their children as they can fit in their mouth. Of course they would. Because, because their metabolism is <laughs> one of the quickest of any animal. So, uh, so yeah, the young do not have it very easy. In the wild, about we'd expect two out of every 400 to survive. Well, if your parent's going to eat you after you're born. Yeah, yeah. So you're, the odds are a, a little stacked against They're not in your favor, yeah. Shapes and patterns like my hand. But going back to that regeneration, if he loses that arm, It'll grow back, it'll also regenerate that eye. However, the arm that he loses will also regenerate a brand new sea star that's a genetic clone of the one that lost it, wow. as long as he finds ways to get food inside of his body. So theoretically, wow. if we cut off all five of his arms and fed his central portion and his five arms, we'd get six genetic clones from that one sea star. Technically five clones and one original. So uh, would they grow to look like that or would it just be so their it one arm? So it, no, so they would grow to look like a sea star. That being said, they might not look completely identical just because of environments like sometimes they get darker or lighter based on environment yeah. but if you took a dna sample from those they they'd be the exact same, same. Wow. yep uh, we learned that completely on accident in the pacific ocean scientists were studying a fish population where there were a lot of sea stars yeah. and the sea stars were eating all that fish food so uh, they took as many sea stars as they could on their boat and cut them in half threw them back as fish food hoping to restart uh, that fish population they came back a year later fish population was gone and there were double the number of sea stars because oh they had cloned the entire population uh these guys also eat in a very interesting way so their mouth is going to be on the underside of their body right now this guy's mouth is closed it's that mm -hmm. little star shape if he wants to eat he'll open up that mouth and push his stomach outside of his mouth so if you ever see a sea star with a yellow sponge outside of his body that's his stomach the reason why they eat that way is because they're really good predators. If they find a shell or a clam, like something like that, clam or an oyster, yeah. that stomach acid can actually break down that shell so they can push that stomach inside of that clam, eat the contents, and then pull it back inside their body. These guys can also suction to things pretty quickly. Let's see if this guy makes me a liar. There you go. You can see all of those suction cups right through mm -hmm. the bottom of the glass. So cool. what he's doing is all of those are little tube feet. He's pulling water through them to make them suction cups. If he wants to move around, he'll just do the opposite, where he'll pull, push water through those feet to propel them along the surface of the ocean. What are their predators? What would eat something like that? So not too many things, just because yeah. they don't have much sustenance. So they have what we call a water vascular system, which means they don't really pump blood through their body. They just put, pump water. So in reality, they don't have too much tissue to oxygenate. So if you were to eat them, You'd, it, you wouldn't get too much nutrition out of them, but I can imagine like a like a stingray or a sea turtle, something like that, yeah. with the good jaw to eat hard food would be able to. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. Any other questions on these guys? It is a horseshoe crab. She is still young. She's about three years old. Again, if you want to touch her, same rules apply. Just don't take her completely out of the water. If you're feeling really brave, I can lift her side up and you can feel all those wriggly legs underneath. But you don't have to do that if you don't want to. 
Is it soft? It's going to be fairly hard. Oh, it is hard. Yeah. Same thing. They don't have a backbone either, so they need that rough shell. Interesting. What is that again? It's a horseshoe crab. A crab? That doesn't look like a crab. No, it's not it's actually a, a crab, but we call it a crab for a reason. Okay, the starfish isn't a fish, and the yeah, horseshoe so, crab so, isn't a crab. So you don't have to. That's okay. Yeah, it literally cannot they hurt you, though. Yeah. They, don't have, they don't have a jaw. They can't bite. No poison, no venom. Oh, interesting. You got this. Do it. Just close your eyes and I'll put the feet on your arm. See, look at that. See? Perfect. So there you go. Okay, so so they're more closely related to spiders and ticks and scorpions than actual crabs. Ah. They're more like an arthropod than a crustacean. Kind of reminds me of a trilobite. Yeah, it looks a lot like a trilobite. They've also lived really long like trilobites. So, but first of all, we're going to talk about her number of eyes. So she's got ten eyes. She has two on the top. Those are compound eyes, so she can see us just as well as we can see her with those two eyes. The other eight are going to be simple, like the sea stars. So they got five along the brim of their shell, two on their underbelly, and then the one we just recently discovered is one on the tip of the tail, like a little backup camera. It looks like a lobster inside. It does. So that's the way. The reason why they were initially named horseshoe crabs was we before we had access to genetic testing, we named things based off of their morphology or what they looked like. Uh -huh. So a horseshoe shape on the top, lots of crab pinchers so horseshoe crab did make sense but then when we did genetic testing we realized that they were more closely related to like a spider all right wow. so uh these guys um just like a spider have the same number of legs as eyes so 10 legs and 10 eyes uh these guys have been on the planet for a really really long time since the dinosaurs some argue even before the dinosaurs oh the general... he's right oh away, yeah huh? so the general consensus is roughly 400 to 500 million years <gasps> the reason why they've lived so long does anyone know what's special about them that's helped them live so long they can't, yeah. nobody can see them. Well, that helps. They're not tasty. Their tail, their tail helps, and being not tasty helps too. Because if I flip her upside down, you notice she's really concave. Yeah. But none of that's what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is, do you know why horseshoe crabs are really important to us? Like what we use them for? No idea. No? Medicine, clean. we use them for medicine. Do you know oh. what part of them we use for medicine? Shell. It's their blood. It's well. their blood. Their blood is the most efficient blood we've ever discovered. What I mean by that is it clots better than ours. Uh, it has better antibacterial responses than ours. So if uh, a predator comes up to her, rips a few of her limbs off, she's not gonna bleed out. She's gonna clot almost immediately. She's not gonna get an infection. And, then, and the next time she molts, she's gonna regrow all those limbs. And then to add insult to injury for us, she her blood also has anti-carcinogenic properties. So they will not get cancer. Um, so how do we use them for their blood? Great question. So. Uh, any type of cancer research uses their blood, alligator blood, other animals with anti-carcinogenic properties. We're trying to figure out exactly what it is in their blood that stops them from getting cancer. Similarly, any we use them because of their, vac their uh, antibacterial properties or clotting properties to try to create vaccines. So any vaccine you've ever taken has used their blood for research. But my favorite fact, our favorite use for their blood is NASA takes their blood up to the space station because their blood uh, is has such an antibacterial response that it clots if any bacteria is present so we use it to test if an environment sterile so if you take just a little bit of horseshoe crab blood and you drop it on a surface then you look at that surface under a microscope you know uh, that if that blood clotted even in the slightest that there's some type of bacteria there so if their blood did not clot then you can assume that that environment was sterile wow. so instead of taking a whole testing kit up to the space station all you need is a little microscope and a little vial of horseshoe crab blood and that's it how long do they live about 25 years. Wow. Um, so they can live a good, good long life. So this one's about three years old. By the time it's about 15, it'll be around this size. Wow. Yeah, so they can get pretty big. That's an amazing. This is not a dead horseshoe crab. Yeah. This is uh, brand new. And you'll see how much bigger she crab. is than this shell. Oh. Oh, so wow. different coloration and very different in size. Uh, this is all just a two week difference. So they grow very different than us. So us, like when we're young, we grow fairly linearly. We're always growing just a little bit. Occasionally we'll have a little bit of a spurt here and there. Um, however, these guys, they grow in a really weird fashion. So they don't grow at all. Then they molt, grow dramatically, don't grow till their next molt, grow, grow dramatically. The reason why that works is their shell, when you felt it, is hard. So they can't grow. That shell can't expand with them. Yeah. So what happens is they start growing a new shell underneath this old one. Mm -hmm. And as it grows, it pushes the old shell off. So it makes this crease in the front side of her body. And then the new horseshoe crab is really soft when it crawls out because it's still expanding. And so it expands, expands, expands so until it gets to about that size. Then it hardens and then it waits uh, to the next molt to start doing that process all over again. slipper lobster. However, if you take a look underneath of her, you'll notice that she doesn't have any big front claws like a typical lobster. Mm -hmm. yeah. So no lobster that you'll find in Florida will have big front claws. 
Um, so instead she's got those modified plates, which are actually types of antenna on the front of her face. She uses those to sift through the sand to look for food. Uh, they're really sensitive so they can feel those vibrations and know if anything's nearby. Uh, they do also have that really muscular tail. Um, so if I pick her up, she's gonna kick away. You can see that nice oh. tail. She does swim backwards. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then my favorite fact about her is a little gross, but very interesting is how she communicates. So one of the reasons why we're not on speaking terms is she does not have vocal cords. She cannot actually make a noise to speak with me. Um, so if she were to communicate, she'd actually communicate through hormones. So the way that works is if she gets stressed, she's gonna excrete a, excrete, uh, excuse me, excrete a stress hormone from her brain. That uh, stress hormone's going to accumulate in her urine. She urinates into the water. The other slipper lobsters in the area can sense that stress hormone and know that there's probably a predator nearby. The really gross thing is that she urinates through her face. Um, yeah, so not very, not very fun. So I can, uh, I'm very thankful that we have vocal cords or else our tour and our snorkel would not be super fun. Not mm. very ladylike. No, not very ladylike. <laughs> All right. Are you feeding them? I am feeding them. <laughs> yeah. However, they will follow us when we move to the next station. All right. So the really chunky bluefish up front, those guys are not supposed to be that fat. Those guys are doctor fish tangs. They're called doctor fish because of the black line by the base of their tails. Those are called scalpels. So they can actually extend those at 90 degrees to cut other fish. The reason why they're fat is they like to eat algae and there's lots of algae in here. We do have a stingray down at the bottom. His name is Arby. Uh, he's doing his best effort to help us clean up the algae, which is really weird because stingrays should not eat algae, but he's really weird. Um, he's fascinating. You should definitely try to look for him in the water. He'll come right on up to you guys. You're looking at me? Oh yeah, so that guy, he loves people. So that's our French angelfish. Um, so I'm glad you pointed him out. That's our French angelfish. He grew up in our tank with Dwayne, the Rock Beauty Angelfish, so he's used to being face-to-face -face with people. Mm -hmm. So he very well might just come right on up to you when you're snorkeling in here. Uh, but he's one of the biggest species of angelfish in the world. He'll get to about two feet long. Wow. Oh, what's that? Uh, the really big fish right there are the biggest mullet you'll ever see in your entire life. Whoa. Mullet are not supposed to get that big, um, but we have no idea what we're doing to grow our mullet this big because we have four in here. We started with four, and they're all just massive. I'm convinced that the mullet are going to outlive me at this point. All right, the big gray fish right there, that's a gray angelfish. He's the biggest species of angelfish in the world. He'll get to around two and a half feet long. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we have nurse sharks here, but not in this tank. So you won't be swimming with any sharks. You will be swimming with, you will be swimming with a stingray in here. Uh, but when we'll talk about our nurse sharks, but we're not gonna, we don't put any nurse sharks in this tank. No. Is nurse sharks have teeth? So nurse sharks do have teeth. They have really, really small teeth though. But I do want to really uh, quickly point out the bluefish down at the bottom with the yellow line by its tail. That's how skinny a tang is supposed to be. So that is a blue surgeon fish tang or a blue Caribbean tang. Uh, and that yellow line by the base of its tail is also a scalpel that it can cut other fish with. Oh, wow. All right, so Arby's swimming some circles right now because he is trying to chase the other fish away. It's like a vulture circling its prey. It's basically claiming its prey. Uh, so, as you can see, however, him circling his food is clearly not deterring any of the fish from coming on over here. Oh, there we go. All right. I saw him eat it. Yeah, I was going to say, I knew he got most of the pieces. I think I saw one go down to his belly, but he got most of them. I gave him like a big handful there. So, uh, that is our count of stingray. It looks like he's coming back for more, so let's see if he'll take another piece from me. The more the merrier. What are you feeding him? So he gets a variety of food. Oh, and our, my favorite fish just passed. Hopefully he'll come back again. His name's Houdini. So I'm feeding him some shrimp, some squid rings, and a small fish species called silver okay, shots. look at this fish. What's wrong with this thing? <gasps> yep, so the gray one with that spot on this forehead, that's our gray angelfish with hole in the head disease. But it's it's just uh, something that he's predisposed to. It's like a <laughs> German shepherd being predisposed to an ACL tear. You know, if it just jumps wrong, it's going to get an ACL tear. Same thing with him. If he gets a little nick on his head or something like that, he's immediately going to get all the head disease. The smallest one is closing in on seven feet long. Oh, so okay. they're big. Uh, and they're not very bright. And their favorite food is shrimp. <laughs> and our fingers look like shrimp. Yeah. Exactly. These guys are all nurse shirts, and I'm going to grab their food. And what we talk about is if they eat at the surface, it will make a popping noise. And I'll demonstrate that here in just a second. All right, so here they come. So he's gonna make a pop in three, two, one. That was a pretty pathetic pop right there. <laughs> that is a pop, nonetheless, that pop is his suction breaking the surface tension of the water. 
All right. So did we decide we wanted to feed? I'll just person? watch you. We'll just yeah. watch? Okay. <laughs> she likes to spit, so I'd be careful with your camera. Oh, she oh, will oh. spit water. I think he wants to do the water. Do you want to do it? You want to do it? Do you want to feed? I want to try to feed. You want to feed? All right. Here you go. I'll show you how to do it one more time. You want to keep turning the water. So we're going to keep it in the water just like this. When one comes up, we follow their head. He's still a little too low. So here comes Bruiser. I'll show you a fish shark right here. So we're going to follow his head and he's going to make a pop and we just release. Just like that. Whoa. You, you got, are you sure? I can do it with you if you want. Which one do we feed him? Anyone? Anyone. So if you stick it in the water, you'll smell it. And here's oh, he turned around. Oh, actually, yeah, you can turn around. Oh, he turned around. Oh, he turned around. And then, did you want to touch too? Feeding is five, touching yeah. and feeding is uh, ten. So, what I'll, what I'll do is, yeah, once they're ice passed, just cut them through the head. Oh, he's around. petting him. Oh, good, good shark. Hey, Cocky. Okay. Don't do that, but you can do that. Well, that was fun. What'd you think, Keith? That was awesome. Awesome. It was. It's a small place, but he said that it's privately owned. So the people that own it um, keep it up, and that's why they're so small because it's just they pay for everything. And uh, but he said they're growing, so um, a lot of interesting things to see there. And just I was telling Keith, I just love being under the water. It's so peaceful. It is. It's anytime you get to spend the time in God's aquarium. Yeah, uh, it's a wonderful thing. And the stingray, I kept yeah. trying to find it. And yeah. if I stayed still, because I just kind of sat there, and he would come like up mm -hmm. right next to me. And so, uh, yeah, and such pretty fish. They were so big. Those skinny ones that reflect. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But yeah, highly recommend. It's a small aquarium, but it was, well, we've got a Groupon for 25, 25 bucks. bucks. Yeah, 25 bucks. Great two hours. It was half off, and look at how much we learned. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I tell you, that young fella is quite yes. knowledgeable, and I wish him well in his career. Yeah, all of them, like that one when we were mm -hmm. in the Okie Finoki, and they've seemed so passionate about it, and that kid is going to veterinary school. school yeah. Yep, so, um, so that was a fun adventure. <laughs> Good morning! It is a great morning. It's beautiful outside. I will show you the... Roosters, is that what they are? We're crowing this morning. I was up early. I went to bed early last night, both Keith and I. The neighbors bought some salmon and uh, they have family here. And so they had Keith make the salmon and Keith made three different kinds and marinated them. And it was amazing. And I was in bed by 8.30. And so yeah, it was a great day. And I was gonna end the vlog here. I gotta go into town, gotta do laundry. All the things and um but i think keith and i are gonna go kayaking him and john both have kayaks and uh you know we're right on the river and they've been multiple times and i just haven't had time because i've been working and so it's such a beautiful day i'm like keith let's go kayaking this afternoon so i'm gonna go into town get all my stuff done and then come back i'm sweating it's actually perfect outside just in the van sometimes it's about 10 degrees hotter so I'm going to get out and, uh, yeah, I'll see you on the kayak. Let's go. So I just wanted to tell you real quick, you know how I talked about um, getting your prescriptions on the road? So I came into town and I got a prescription. Um, and it's a three-month prescription, so I only get it every three months. And I got a notice that my prescription was ready in Albuquerque, New Mexico, because that's where I was when I got it filled last time while I was on the road. So I just drove through the drive-through and just said, hey, um, can you pull this prescription over here? And they said, sure, no problem. And um, I went to work out, went to do my laundry and got notice it was done, so I picked it up. So easy to get prescriptions on the road if you thought like, you know, what am I gonna do? I take prescriptions. It's really easy just to have them pulled over unless it can't be anything like pain medication and stuff like that. So I just wanna clarify, stuff like that um, is, you can't transfer it. Um, you have to get a doctor's note to send it to a certain place. So just so you know, that's not easy to get transferred, but you know, your normal prescriptions, blood pressure, stuff like that, um, not make pain medication. So be wary of that too. Uh, if you're going to travel, um, you want to ask your doctor, tell them you're traveling, and 
you can come up with a solution. But just wanted to show you how easy it is. Okay, onward. I'm gonna drive while I'm talking because I forgot that I wanted to say, I thought I had two weeks. I thought I had two weeks left. I kept telling everybody, oh, yeah, and that's what happens when you drive and try to vlog. But I thought I had two weeks left here. And uh, I was talking, I was actually talking to Dr. Galani. We're gonna get together before I leave. And um, he's like, oh, you leave the 13th. He goes, so, you know, next week, a week from Monday. And I'm like, what? What? Don't Keith, I'm like, Keith, I only have a week left. So, uh, and Minnesota, so it's Sunday now. Minnesota is getting another uh, snowstorm. Uh, so I'm debating whether to stay for another week or leave the day that I was going to leave, which is the 13th, Monday. Oh, 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 railroad tracks. Always dangerous in a road trek. Um, I'm debating on whether I should leave that day and start heading back. It's hot here, so I have my hair pulled back. Uh, or um, just head back, go slow, and um, and just kind of work my way there and see how the weather is, depending on how slow I go. Because I have to work anyway from 1.30 to 5.30 every day. Um, and I don't know, I'm thinking of stopping in Nashville. I've never been to Nashville. So, um, yeah, that's up for debate, but I still can't believe I only have a week left. I'm sad, actually. It's the first time I think I've been sad leaving anywhere. So anyway, I just wanna tell you that. I thought I had two weeks left. Nope, one week, one week. Time goes by so fast, especially when you're having fun. And I am having fun. Okay, time to watch the road. Well, I guess I'm going to leave you here. I got home, I was doing some work, and then I texted Keith. Yeah, no, no action over there. Uh, so he must be sleeping. Um, so we're not going kayaking. So I am going to leave you here because I want to turn the fan back on, and I got some work done. And so, yeah, it's Sunday evening. I don't know, it's already about like 4.30. Um, yeah, well, you know what to do. Go out and make an adventure, no matter how big or how small. You don't have to sell everything and move into a van. You can just go to an aquarium and look around. How fun. And go call someone you love. And as Joyce says, tell them that you love them. And don't you dare forget your magic. Okay, I'm going to go cool off. <laughs> I will see you in the next one. Bye.